Hello again. Um, this is uh, Mikkel in Sandmagasin, and uh, we are running this interview in English, which I'm sure is surprising to our Norwegian readers, but uh, we are doing it to the benefit of our foreign readers, uh, who are becoming quite a few on account of uh, our coverage of events um, in world sailing. And since you are okay. a candidate to become vice president, um, we're very happy to um, interview you and that you are our um, Saturday uh, uh, person uh, on uh, on uh, sandmagasinet.no. So okay. let me start uh, by asking you um, how, how come that you decided to run for office in World Saving? Well, um, having followed the development of uh, the situation in World Saving over the past month, um, I felt that uh, the World Saving organization, and especially the board, had uh, a need uh, for uh, people with my qualifications. Um, I uh, have the uh, to some extent, uh, but uh, I, I found that the uh, the way the board was run uh, was not optimal, and uh, I think people with uh, uh, certain experience in, in board uh, work and uh, uh, with the uh, uh, qualifications of a sober uh, and uh, and uh, experienced lawyer uh, would be good. Let's look at your experience again. You um, are a sailor. You have been. Uh, you were actually the first world champion in the England class, going way back. And you were uh, on the Norwegian Olympic team in in uh, in uh, 1972, which, uh, as it happens, uh, Gerardo Seligi was also a part of the Spanish Olympic team uh, at those Olympics. I suppose he didn't really get to know each other then. Um, but then you have been vice commodore of um, Norwegian or Norwegian Yacht Club. You have been commodore there and also president of um, the Norwegian Sailing Federation. Uh, I wouldn't say that it was equally dramatic uh, when you took over uh, the, in the Norwegian Sailing Federation, but it, it was also then required to do a sort of financial turnaround. Uh, yes, um, we discovered that uh, uh, the federation had severe problems, both in the way it was organized and uh, also with the finances. So we needed to do a, a complete turnaround of the organization. Um, and uh, uh, about a year after uh, the, we discovered our problems, we were back on track. And we had uh, we downsized the organization, uh, cut all, in a, uh, all unnecessary expenses. And the organization is now uh, very well run. It is small, but it's very well functioning. That was a quite successful turnaround. And also, um, uh, regard to uh, results uh, in in sailing, uh, it was also uh, a turnaround uh, with uh, yes, we, with certainly a lot yes. of good sailors. Now we have uh, several candidates to win medals in in Tokyo. We haven't had that for a while. Yes, we uh, managed to do this turnaround without cutting too many costs on the on the top athletes. And uh, as you say, we have uh, we have quite a number of uh, sailors which are now actually uh, kind of medal candidates in in Tokyo. Uh, I think I believe we have uh, at least two or three among the six top ranked boats in uh, laser laser radial and fin. Yes, and you also have a pretty good um, 49er FX uh, team that are not as highly yeah. ranked, but uh, have very good results uh, internationally. So we have four teams that uh, can do really well. So, so that that is nice. Um, you are addressing to the uh, financial situation of the world sailing, and that there are certain needs uh, that uh, will um, have to be fulfilled, and and one of them is. Uh, you said downsize uh, the cost of uh, of the office. It's well known that the World Sailing has a very expensive office in London that they moved from uh, Southampton from much cheaper premises. And uh, what do you think you can do about that? Well, uh, I understand that the uh, the lease uh, for the office space is very expensive, um, and we will have to uh, uh, 
look at that uh, very carefully and uh, reduce those costs if possible. Uh, but I think also that uh, there are other cost elements which need to be scrutinized and possibly downsized. Uh, because the a board without financial room to operate uh, cannot do much. So we need to uh, get room to maneuver in uh, in uh, uh, the year to come or the years to come. And your experience as a lawyer will uh, help both in possibly renegotiating the lease and also um, to deal with governance of uh, world sailing. Uh, of course, it, um, having been a lawyer for 40 years, I uh, know something about renegotiating contracts, and I hope to be able to apply that uh, experience and my knowledge um, for the benefit of world sailing. And um, and then then having done that, having you know possibly reduced the cost so that we have room to maneuver. Um, we need to have a very close look at the way in which uh, the board members are cooperating. There are uh, indications that uh, the cooperation within the board in the, the past four years have not been optimal. And um, I believe that uh, board tailing needs uh, a, a board which is acting as one body and which is able to pull in one direction not in several directions, but uh, uh, very different agendas uh, for each member. And also this includes um, transparency um, uh, outside the board, so that the people will know what you're yeah. doing, how your finances are being run. I remember from Ivy Sunam's time, um, the accounts were published every three months, so people would know exactly how things are Developing and that yes, is no. also making it much easier to maneuver when you know. Yes, uh, yes. Um, reporting to the to the M&A um, uh, is very important. I think the um, it, it is also very uh, important that um, the board cannot operate without having the confidence and the support of the M&As. So to provide uh, transparency and integrity uh, at all levels of discussion and decision making is extremely important. We need to have the board needs to have the uh, confidence and the support of uh, the members. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. We're going to have uh, fights and refights over and over again unless you have um, um, the full cooperation and the support of uh, those who really uh, should decide where word sharing should go, uh, uh, which is the, uh, the the members. So this means that the uh, the communication between the board and the m and will have to improve considerably? Yes, that's very important. Mm. Tim, how do you want the board to operate? Do you expect consensus in all cases, or how do you expect to deal with the difference of opinions? In a board? Um, my experience as a board member uh, and as a chairman of different organizations, corporations, and uh, the Royal Norwegian Yacht Club and the, of the uh, uh, Norwegian Sailing Federation, is that the boards try uh, to reach a consensus on all matters. And if it's not possible uh, quickly to reach uh, consensus, uh, one should try to discuss and find uh, common ground. Because if you have uh, quick decisions uh, with uh, majorities uh, 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 voting uh, and the majority wins, uh, you very often uh, find yourself in a very difficult situation the next time a similar question comes up. Um, so a certain vengefulness and so on, is, uh, is, uh, you can see that very often. So therefore, in, in my work as, a, as the chairman and as a, as a board member, I have also always tried to see as much consensus as possible. Your term as the president of the Norwegian Senior Federation expires uh, next spring. So that means that yes. after that you will have full time to concentrate uh, on helping the board and the new president uh, 
to put uh, world sailing back on uh, the right track. Uh, yes, right, that's right. My turn. Not now it's in uh, March. Hmm. Um, it is the fact that um, that you have not been serving on any committees or any positions in uh, world sailing before, so uh, you will be unknown by uh, a number of people. Um, uh, and also, um, you will have no alliances to certain groups or classes or anything. Um, I would think that would be an advantage. Well, it's, it is to be unknown uh, in this position. is of course, not a good thing in itself. Uh, but uh, it is uh, an advantage to be independent of uh, persons and organizations. Um, which uh, I believe uh, could be said to have been a problem uh, to some extent in board sending affairs. And, and not the least, you will be able to see things with completely fresh uh, eyes, where, you know, where you have no, um, That's right. n no um, prejudice um, uh, beforehand. So, so that will pr probably help you and will be good for a board. Yes, I think, uh, uh, you know, it's easier to keep your integrity um, and your sort of uh, objectivity uh, if you don't have many, too many ties uh, to uh, past uh, events and, uh, and uh, other persons, etc., etc. Is there any other matters that you would like to share with um, our readers and listeners uh, um, on this occasion? Well, I, I think the, uh, there are certain, should we say, general issues which I um, think um, or which I uh, will uh, uh, work especially hard for uh, if I get elected. And uh, I think the uh, support of women sailing around the world is very really good. It is good in itself, uh, but it is also a way of recruiting more people to sailing. That is one area which I think is is important, um, and we need <clears throat> we need uh, also to try to uh, align the classes worldwide, uh, or at least region wise, to see if we can get a more common uh, ground for competing and measuring uh, the the sailing uh, um, uh, the the results, etc., of, of uh, sailing around in the different regions. Uh, I think also, at least, we have seen that in Norway, and I think that is probably uh, uh, a common problem, that uh, sailing is, uh, is not inexpensive. So affordability is increasingly important, and I think uh, we need to inspire our members and their members uh, to try and make uh, sailing more available for people. Uh, we have uh, used a lot of this uh, in Norway, uh, this uh, thinking, and uh, club-owned equipment and uh, so-called bag sailing are measures which have proved very successful in Norway. And uh, lastly, I'd like to mention that uh, the uh, emerging nations need special attention. And the uh, word sailing should try to be... Uh, uh, Labor uh, to bring these nations up uh, to uh, become real sailing nations. That could benefit world sailing greatly. You mentioned the bag sailing, a uh, term which is maybe not familiar to everybody, but uh, which means that people can uh, go on board a boat, uh, bring their bag with the sail clothes, and they have, met, they have paid a fee uh, to be able to participate uh, on a seasonal basis and. Uh, that is their tickets to sailing. Is that the right impression? Yes. The, the principle is that uh, uh, the sailor pays a uh, fairly low amount yearly uh, to uh, get access to uh, a boat uh, in the class, and uh, uh, he can reserve uh, time for sailing uh, digitally, uh, go on board the boat, uh, sail uh, for a couple of hours, uh, maybe more, and then come back uh, to the club, leave the boat, and go home. When the, when the club takes care of maintenance and uh, and uh, 
uh, you know, uh, a provision of uh, of uh, spare parts and uh, and and so on. So it makes it possible for uh, busy people uh, to find time uh, to save, and it is also very affordable. Another area which uh, some people say have been neglected by world sailing lately is the Paralympics uh, and sailing being part of the Paralympic Games. Um, is that something that this new board should be working on, you think? Yes, I think so. Uh, it is important, but I think it, it is also a sort of a common, this is the common ground that we should try to bring sailing back in Paralympics. I don't think that is... Um, Controversial in any way, uh, and, in, uh, and we have uh, made uh, efforts to do that worldwide. Um, uh, I believe there are there is a limit of uh, no, you have to have at least thirty or thirty two uh, nations uh, during uh, para, Paralympics or parasailing, um, and uh, it was uh, the IOC dropped. And drop the Paralympics because there were too few nations uh, doing this. But now we're back on track, and I think it is maybe on the question of time before we have uh, brought the uh, sailing back in Paralympics. Can we can we hope that for the 2028 Olympics? You think? Uh, I hope so. Yes. Mm. Mm. Um, okay, again, um, Sand Magazine uh, would of course be very happy to have a Norwegian representative in World Sailing. It means that we would have access to uh, uh, interesting news and development of international sailing. And uh, I wish you um, uh, the best of luck. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we close? Um, well, um, I. Uh, share your view that uh, there should be a person from northern, uh, from the northern part of uh, uh, Europe uh, on the board. Um, we have a long tradition of sailing in Scandinavia and the Nordic countries, and uh, I think our way of thinking, uh, both in uh, the social part of this and also the, uh, our um, should we say social democratic uh, thinking would be good uh, to bring into the board of world sailing. Thank you very much. And again, best of luck. Thank you. Bye bye.